Hello everyone, and welcome to the Broken Road Saturday stream that I was promising on Twitter yesterday. For those of you who pay attention, I'm going to flip back to that screen that I was just showing that we're going to get back to it in a little bit. This is Broken Roads. I'm a little bit into Hello the game, everyone. not very far. And welcome to the Broken Roads Saturday stream that I was promising on Twitter. And I forgot to turn that off. <laughs> As usual. Okay. Let's get back to this. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to switch one more thing here. No oh, crud. Okay. Let's get this working here. Sorry, everyone. Jeez, I'm really not prepared today, am I? How dumb. Okay. There we go. Broken roads right there. There's the game. Get back to my party right here. All right. So here's the deal. The game came out a little while ago. The game was something I was supposed to stream April 6th for Turn-Based Thursday Fest. But the developers and the people at Turn-Based Thursday Fest got their wires crossed a little bit and Drop Bear Bites, who makes this game, came to me and said a couple days before I was supposed to stream and said, hey, we have an embargo until the 10th, so you can't stream it on the 6th. That was a bummer. They have given me an extra key, which I am planning on giving away to somebody at some point in time. So I have character sheet here. Like I said, I'm a little ways into the story. I have some points to spend. And then we can progress through there. And then what I want to do is talk about the roadmap that they put out. Because they've already put a roadmap out for a ton of updates. Because I think the, the kindest way to say it is the game was not received probably the way they hoped it would be on launch day. It looks great. But there, there have been some issues. And so we're going to cover the roadmap early here. I'm going to take a look at the rest of my stuff here, though. What is this? Dead Eye? Let's see what happens when I get up to 25 and unlock this. 10% accuracy. Okay. I do like the way they've handled stats and skills and stuff. And, and a lot of this game is meant to be a sort of throwback to the early Fallout games. Fallout 1, Fallout 2, those kinds of games. And I think it also is meant to evoke a little bit of the Wasteland games, which I... You know, I'm a big fan of it. I loved Wasteland 3. A huge, huge amount. Opportunist, what is this? Help yourself to a free swipe at enemies doing a runner. Chance to make an attack on enemies moving out of melee range. I don't care about that because I'm not going to be a melee person. Or throwing. There's Drunken Master. There's Vigilance. This is, um, I believe this is basically your Overwatch. So I have 13 more points I got. These at 25, these at 25. Biology, so I can poke that up and get that to the next level. Each point in biology increases the effectiveness of healing items by 1%. Allows you to use the items that cure negative conditions. 10% chance that the restorative item won't be used up. That's really nice. Punt is an interesting one. This is unique to the game. Take a chance at a challenge beyond your usual capabilities. In combat, spend punt points to increase accuracy of attacks. Out of combat, spend punt points to attempt to pass a skill check that is just out of reach. Higher ranks increase the amount and effectiveness of punt points. Each point spent in punt increases the character's critical hit chance by 0.2%. In combat, increases the accuracy of attacks by 5% per punt. I like this because in these these sorts of stat-based games like Fallout and like Wasteland, you have to fumble your way through the game the first time and learn where all the skill checks are and what they are, and then poke points into your skills at appropriate times just before you need them. I remember doing this a whole lot with Fallout 1 and 2 where you had to know where the locks were that required 25% and 50% and 75% or I guess that was like Fallout 3 but you had to know where these locks were and what they were going to require so that you would make sure to put enough points into lock picking so that by the time you got to that object, you could unlock it. And punt allows you to not have to do that. So if you just don't have enough points in something, you can use punt and try to pass it instead. I, li I like that a lot. I think that's really cool. It's a cool feature in the game. So now I have six extra points. Uh, what Shooting mastery, make every sh shot count, increase accuracy of range stats. It's probably a really smart thing for me to keep doing. I'm going to put another point in Vigilance, and then we'll confirm that. 
move on. So we're here at this aircraft carrier. And so at the very start here, and I've already got people watching. This is great. I love seeing y'all show up. Uh, we're going to take a chance here and go look at this. I'm going to turn this on. So that we can see what this looks like. Let's see. I got to move this up, don't I? This down. There we go. So this is the roadmap that they've come up with recently. They posted this on Twitter. Um, this is the 19th of April, so that we're talking six days away for a PC patch here. They're going to add more combat to the early game. That's the first thing I noticed. I am... How far am I into the game? I'm only like an hour and a half into the game, but it has been all dialogue and walking around. And those of you who played Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 know that you get kicked out of the vault and right away you're fighting rats and rad scorpions. And and that's useful because it teaches you the combat mechanics and you're putting these points into things like shooting or melee and all this stuff. You want to use them. So I didn't think it was any coincidence that this was item number one, add more combat in the early game. Allow manually leveling up, leveling up your companions. That'll be huge, obviously. Improvements to the random encounters and including more non-combat random encounters. Introduce a mechanic to the overworld that lets you flee based on cumulative party agility versus cumulative enemy agility on or off as an option in the setting screen. And start a battle with 50% initiative if you fail. Add stat restrictions to different types of weapons. That makes sense. Additional localization fixes and improvements. Additional voiceover throughout the game. So this is something that I remarked on I think uh, the first little bit that I played it, and then I know that that A is it ACG, who does tons of reviews. He also remarked on the exact same thing in his review, which is like about twelve minutes long, where he said it's really odd because when you are talking to these characters, there'll be a whole block of text there, and they will voice over part of it, but not all of it, and so then you don't know if it's a glitch or not. Oh. I'm thinking about this. I'm, I'm thinking of a totally different game. It was uh, Zoria Age of the Shattering that came out. And I don't have it up here anymore because I've, I've uninstalled that one. I was a backer on that game. And I was really, really disappointed when it came out. And it did the same thing. You'd get in these conversations and there would be part of it would be voiced and then the rest of it wouldn't. And it was like, it was really jarring. And it made you wonder if it was a bug. Did the, did the audio give out or something like that? So they do the same kind of thing here and people have commented on it. So they're saying we're going to add more voice over throughout the game, which is good. I'm of the opinion. I know it's really expensive to hire voice actors, especially for small indie, indie studios. And I'm of the opinion that you either just go the Pillars of Eternity route and don't do it or you go the Baldur's Gate route and do it all. <laughs> I got no problem reading the whole thing. But as a streamer, it's really annoying to start with a line of dialogue that gets read by the voiceover and then it stops and there's still a whole bunch more dialogue on the screen. And now I, as a streamer, have to pick that up. Uh, I, I don't like that. So I will be happy to see them adjust this. Fixes to quest logic, more animations and gestures. Then there's a bunch of other stuff. There's a mid-May PC patch they're also working on. Allow the user to set up different key binds. That's key. No pun intended. More fleshing out of the Kangalori and the last chapter. More reactivity to events in Meridian. Additional Aussie slang entries in the cyclopedia. Many. This whole thing takes place in Australia, which is really cool, by the way. Additional low-level morale options throughout. This has a really interesting morale system. There is that. And it seems like a game that's really built around choice and consequence. So hopefully we'll get into this. Adding more voiceover to consecutive dialogue nodes and conversations that currently have partial voiceover. So yeah, more voiceover throughout the game and more consecutive dialogue nodes voiceover, which would be good. So clearly they want to work on that. And that's a good thing. Uh, make gear more impactful additional options of wearables and making them have more significance in combat. Yes, all that would be great. And maybe our most degrees use oversight of all allowing you to pet more of the animals, <laughs> which is, which is of course it's cute. So, so uh, yeah, let's get to back to the game here. We'll play a little bit of the game and roll in here. I made it this airplane crashed um, where the story is at here. 
at the basic part of the game. The, the, the first little bit of the game is kind of like a tutorial on how to walk around, meet people and do a couple of really simple type quests. And then you wander off and there's a there's a town and it kind of has a roadhouse moment where there's this this town that's kind of like trying to get on its legs and they've kind of got a pseudo mayor and then somebody else rolls in the town and is like, hey, we can offer you protection. And they tell them to buzz off and and then the town gets attacked and it all goes badly. And so these people are kind of like fleeing. You're with your group. Other people are fleeing. And then out of nowhere, a jet in the sky and it crash lands. Now, remember, this is post-apocalyptic Australia. So we're talking Mad Max land here. And somebody saw a jet and it crashed. So we have come over to inspect the jet situation. Thought I just saw an emu running around here. So we'll see what we can find going on over here. And there's a deceased Whoa. woman and a deceased man. Look. He points towards the break in the fuselage. Two bodies lie motionless on the ground. Yeah, let's check him out. But it doesn't look good. No, because they're dead. Too late for both of them. She's had her throat cut. He's been beaten to death. And mate, this happened very recently. Uh, I'm a sucker for Australian accents. I'm sure a lot of people are. But here was one of the really interesting things that I found really fascinating a long, long time ago. My best friend that I grew up with from the age of like four was a Mormon. He lived next year. He was a grade younger than me, but we did all we did everything together it was a blast really good dude and when he went to go do his mormon mission he went to australia so he's there for two years and i gotta see him like a couple days after he got back and he had an australian accent and it was wild to me uh to hear him and he's like you can't help but pick it up when you're down there for that long and i was like well that's cool that was really funny so hmm let's see okay well if it's so recent, maybe you should double check their vitals. DJ still cradles the head of one of the bodies on the ground in his hands. Mate, I'd love to say different, but the dead is... The man's eyes fly open and he gasps. He looks toward his companion. Jensen! Then he sees you and recoils in horror. He drops the man's head in shock. The victim's eyes close once more and his limbs go slack. Oh, the bloody bats out of bloody hell. <laughs> okay, he is 100% certified dead this time. Oh, coming back from the dead. Well, all right. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> That's funny. You should check his vitals just one last time. No. What's in his pockets? Bit disrespectful. I'll check exactly one place, but that's it. What will it be? Hmm. We may as well see if they have anything we can use. They're dead either way. Yeah, standard stuff, really. See those people back there? She motions towards Mick and the rest of the convoy. They just lost everything. A few hurt feelings don't mean much compared to that. One place. Make your choice. Okay, well... Let's go for his shirt then. Well, there's one pocket in the front and nope, nothing. Mm. Check all his pockets. Why stand on ceremony? He's dead. No means no. Yeah, not this time it doesn't. <laughs> she pushes past him and briskly gives the corpse a once over. Finding nothing, she shrugs and goes for the dead man's boots. Waste not, want not. And as she pulls them off, a small key slides out in the dust. Hey, jackpot. Well, maybe if he can figure out where the key actually goes to. DJ looks away in disgust. Must have been important. May as well find out what was so worth protecting. So this is the interesting thing to me about games that try to do this. Um, I'm not saying this is a good or a bad thing. Just making an observation. But every time I've played a game where that's been really, really heavy on the roleplay for morality, like this one's got a morality wheel in every single thing, that it almost feels like they're they build the characters in the world around that. And so it feels forced. It's like you have to have this person on your team who you're gonna butt heads with about doing something as simple as just checking for loot on a dead person. Because you have to have something that shows off the morality mechanic. It's like, would any of these four people in this situation really, really, really do the whole it's a bit disrespectful thing to check a dead person's pockets in a wasteland post-apocalyptic and a plane just fell out of the sky? I, I, it feels kind of forced to me. Anyway, that's just the feeling I get when I play these games. 
it, it feels like, okay, since there's a morality system, we have to force these types of interactions on you. If there was ever anything in here, it's gone now. Okay, well. Anything else? The plane is definitely busted up. The plane, the plane. I don't see anything else here, people. What else we got? Got a fenced in area. They they crashed the plane in a fenced in area. Interesting. And then there's what, it, what the hell is this? This is like tire tracks. Tar tracks. Somebody was already here. Okay. So I guess we weren't the first ones here. Nope, that'd be what the tire tracks are for. Mm, take a look at the tracks closer, because we're severe. You examine the tracks upon closer inspection, you notice there are two sets of treads. The way the tracks lie and the direction they face imply that one vehicle came from the southeast and one from the northeast. There were clearly two different vehicles here. The only two towns close enough for a vehicle to have gotten here and back again would be Ardath to the southeast, as well as Meridian to the northeast. Mm, okay. Well, so what do we have here? We have a journal. The history of my calamities. <laughs> Examine the bodies next to the plane. Explore the area around the plane. Approach the plane. Search the area for witnesses. Investigate the plane interior. I like this. It's a quest journal that's actually going to tell you what to do. Unlike Starfields, where it just says, talk to so-and-so. By the way, I'm still playing Starfield because it's on the channel. And I haven't played it in a very, very long time because I recorded so many episodes and just scheduled them out on a Sunday months ahead of time. Well, I'm getting to the end of that, so I had to start recording new episodes the other day. That game is still baffling. The, the, the state that it got released in is still baffling to me, and that quest journal is for sure one of them. Okay, so we need to investigate the interior of the plane, but how are we going to do that? Can we get through this door over here? You peer through the torn fuselage, wrecked seats fade in the dimness, but you can make out the open door to the cockpit and a clear passage through. You could easily hoist yourself up and enter the down plane from here. Go for it. You climb up and walk past empty seats. Oh, this is cool. So we're going to get a little static imagery here and a little storytelling going on. This is something Pillars of Eternity does a lot to great effect. The acrid stench of the engine smoke hangs thick inside the... Oh, and so does um, the Pathfinder games do this. Yeah. Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous does this in a few places, and so does Kingmaker. The acrid stench of the engine smoke hangs thick inside the fuselage as you make your way towards the cockpit. Inside are two bodies still strapped to their chairs. I got a story about this, too, by the way. The blood pooled below them, still dripping from the fingertips, reveals how fresh the scene is. But the pilots are still lifeless and cold. Boxes and small containers lie strewn in the aisle. Aside from the pilots up front, the other seats are empty. Search the boxes. Other than some more serious denting around the corners, their locks have clearly been pried open. Someone's been here as well. Yeah, because there were people with automobiles that got here before us. Look over there, says Ella, pointing out the cockpit window. That hut to the southeast. Really? Okay, everybody, remember, southeast. You peer through and see a small disheveled building like in an old abandoned cow station. Hmm, worth a closer look, she adds. So, these guys in the plane. Um, here's an interesting story for anybody who doesn't mind a little bit of morbidity. Sometimes you get to experience things that are kind of cool in your life, even if they are a little dead and gross. Um, my first wife that I was married to was, uh, became an x-ray technician. And while she was studying... She was studying in Spokane, Washington at a place called Holy Family Hospital. And that's where after she got her biology degree from college, got a four year degree, she spent two years there getting her x-ray degree. And while we were there, we we rented a, a, a tiny little apartment. Actually, it wasn't that tiny. It was a nice little apartment that had two bedrooms and a bath and a pretty nice sized living room. And we rented it for 400 a month. You couldn't do that today. It's insane. Anyway. Fairchild Air Force Base is there, and they were having, uh, and they had one of the B-52s flying around. And let me see if I can, let's see if I can even find this. Oh, yeah. I th Oh, yeah, they could, sh yep, yep, yep. 
stick. Oh my gosh, they're going to have this. Holy cow. Okay, I might have to show you guys this. This is going to be nuts. Um, I'm going to put this. Yep, I'm going to show this. This is insane. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is totally nuts. So we're going to do this. Let's go to the desktop real quick and let's switch over to the other screen. All right. So this happened while we were living there. There was a pilot there. There were four guys on this B-52. And he turned too sharply. We saw this on the news when we got home and that's what happened. And it just, it just, he can't recover and it, it falls right out of the sky sideways like that and goes kaboom. Um, it was incredible. It was absolutely insane. So here's the story. I, I, I mean, I, I still can't believe that that actually happened. It's wild. <laughs> I'm blown away by that whole thing. I want to get, I want to get back to where I was here. Okay. So anyway, my wife is an x-ray tech and she's a student. She's not an actual x-ray technician yet. She's still a student and she gets the call to come in and take x-rays of the four people that were on that plane. Amazingly. I mean, I, I don't even know how she got to do that. Um, and I asked her about that and I said, you know, uh, I asked her what that was like and she said she didn't mind it and here's why. Because dead people don't put up a fuss when they're getting x-rays. I guess that's a really common thing that x-ray techs have to deal with is people being a complete pain in the ass about getting their x-ray taken. So that was, it, but it was an interesting story because what she told me was you could see here these two guys in this image on this on this plane and they're, they're dead and their bodies are draped here in broken roads. But she said that because of the way the, the flames ignited on the plane and stuff like that, the parts of the half of their body was was burnt and the other half wasn't, which I just found absolutely fascinating. Um, anyway, it was really, really sad, awful thing that happened to that B-52. And I was still in the Air Force at the time, too, although I wasn't stationed at FE. I was stationed a little ways away as a National Guardsman at a place called the 105th, which is no longer in existence, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we were a little comm squadron. That's where I went after my active duty service. Although I have, I have got to go to Fairchild. In fact, I think, I think when I was at the 105th, I think when I was there, we did our M16 recertifications at Fairchild. In fact, I'm pretty sure I remember that. We take a closer look at the pilots. No breathing, no pulse, only the slow dripping blood, not yet dried. DJ steps closer and kneels next to each in turn, checking their heads, necks, and arms. Cold, he says, probably from the moment this thing came down. He glances outside involuntarily. Not murdered like those two outside. This place has been ransacked. Ella's voice rings loud in the silence. Whoever did it might still be nearby. We need to search the area. Either they'll have more clues or they'll have seen what happened. You turn back past the rows of seats and climb out the torn fuselage. Yeah, so. We got southeast to go and to look for survivors and we'll see what else is on this map. How big is this map area? Okay. So to the southeast over here. Anyway, that whole B-52 coming down, that was crazy bit of business. And it was crazy bit of business that my wife at the time as a student got to do the x-rays and all those guys and it was crazy that they even got it that they even did x-rays on them because it's like they're in the morgue and we know how they died but they still wanted to do x-rays i guess what do we have here bibu <laughs> so who's this guy what's he got for us stranger this pudgy, frightened man wears ill-fitting stained clothes. He's been living a hard... He's been living hard, apparently. He spreads his hands to show there's nothing in them. To his credit, his voice hardly trembles. G'day, mate. Name's Oma. Reuben Oma. I'm a surveyor by trade and a scavenger by circumstance. He swallows hard. Please don't kill me. I'm totally unarmed. What the hell happened here? 
I was exploring nearby when we heard the god-awful sound, saw this huge thing plummet, and figured, hey, salvage, why not check it out? He's talking fast now, almost panicked. Maybe get some loot I could sell, you know? Maybe, maybe get some tucker. Turns out I wasn't the only one to have that idea, though. I snuck away when the mongrels arrived. Ooh, Wait, mongrels. the mongrels were here? Ooh. He nods. I was sussing out the front of that thing when they drove up. They grabbed those two poor people from inside the plane, took them, and his eyes cut towards the wreckage. He swallows. I just hid. Hmm. I had a look inside the plane, but the dust is settled. Is there anything else you saw before we got here? What? You mean, besides the bloodthirsty gang beating two innocent people to death, looting a plane, and almost giving me two heart attacks within the same hour? <laughs> yeah, besides that, Ella says. She looks exasperated. Any and all information is helpful. Think details. He looks nervous. Look, I didn't see everything, all right. How could I? Hiding behind this building. Try not to end up like those passengers. He blows air out between pursed lips. But uh, I did hear something. Right before all the engine revving and them leaving, one of their mob was moaning about how heavy the package was. Look, that's all I know. Don't really want to talk about this anymore going to have nightmares enough already. Where did the Mongols go? He gestures towards the road. They filled their packs and headed off south of here. Probably back to Ardath. Mm. He said the Mongols filled their packs. With what? He takes a few quick breaths and grits his teeth. Dunno. Whatever they could find, I guess. I wasn't exactly watching them from close up. Mm. Who are the Mongols? Those bastards belong to a woman named Pris. Ooh, we got a Blade Runner reference. Calls herself the Empress. Humble, she's not. Runs Arda. So, me? Stay away from there. Let me tell you. Good choice. Arda's not a place you want to visit if you're unarmed or sober. <laughs> Bunch of throwbacks living like a pack of dogs. Fucking beasts in human clothing. Just look at... He has to clear his throat. Just look what they did to those poor passengers. Bunch of throwbacks. A strong insult. Someone who should have been thrown back into the womb. Oh, there's your, there's your Australian slang right there. That's one of the things I noticed that when I played the first hour and a half is that there's a lot of this. So I was picking up some Australian slang. I like that. I like that this game is set in Australia and that people from Australia made it. It's pretty cool. We got something a little different. Hmm, I see. Well, so those bodies were passengers on the plane? Yeah, I mean, I didn't see too much, but there was a lot of yelling and fighting. And, well, the mongrels, they, they take trophies. He touches his heart. I wish I didn't know that, but I do. Hmm. All right, well, sounds like you're pretty observant. Why don't you join our convoy? That's mixed call to make, mate. And if Mick sees some values in him, great. If not, nothing lost. We can't just leave this poor guy out here with nothing. See, and so these are the... There's these four quadrants of morality. Whether you're humanist, utilitarian, Machiavellian, or whatever this other one is. I can't remember them all, but it's... They're degrees, so it's a very interesting way to do it. Of course we can, man says. We can leave me. I'm with you, mate. Let's see what Mick reckons. He gives you a quick smile, not even acknowledging mad. Really? Well, bugger me. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Thank Mick when he says yes. I understand. Appreciate the chance. That's all. Well, let's go get this over with. Let's go talk to Mick then. The Mick. See, if my name was going to be Mick, I'd make everybody address me as The Mick. What do you got to say there, bud? I let you out of my sight for one minute and you come back with a whole clown car of company. What do you mean a clown car? <laughs> Scott's like giant emu in the background. Level. I know, his name is Bibu. We're going to go with the commercial, the Liberty commercial. <laughs> Liberty Bibbity and Bibu. <laughs> I like those commercials because they kind of fit my style of humor. Who are these bludgers? And why are they trailing you like lost puppies? <laughs> Jess holds up a hand to forestall mixed tirade. This is DJ. He gave me that suppository for Bob a while back. 
DJ speaks quickly into the silence, and this is Reuben, a bit down in his luck, could use some help making it back to civilization. Civilization, eh? Mixed bitterness takes DJ aback, but he doesn't have time to interject. One beggar at a time, then. You first, kid. Just as vouch for you so I can see you traveling with us on a temporary basis. And he fixes you with his gaze. This is temporary, right? <laughs> well, just Meridian. Yep. That's all I ask for. Safety in numbers till I make it back to my uncle with my report. Mick turns his attention to Reuben. And what about you, old mate? You look like you've been through the ringer. Oh, of course, that's no concern of ours. Old mate. What's his name? That guy, etc. Gender neutral. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to, uh, after I get done with this, I'm going to have dinner and I'm going to come back tonight and I'm going to be playing. What the hell is this game that has had me so enthralled all day? I can't even remember the name now. That's how, that's how crazy my, my day has been. I've had this weird ass day. Oh, Manor Lords. I'm playing Manor Lords tonight. Y'all can y'all can sit there and watch me play some of that if you want to, because that game has been incredible. I'm so excited they sent me a key for that. The official embargo for reviews comes down on the 24th. The game officially comes out on the 26th. I'm allowed to stream. Everybody's allowed to stream it um, and do videos and stuff like that. We're just not allowed to do reviews until the 24th. I will have a review for Manor Lords up the day that it comes out if I can get my act together considering everything that's going on with School of Rock, which has been keeping me very busy. Uh, so anyway, Reuben, oh, I'm doing just fine. Thanks for asking. He shifts his satchel subtly behind him. Just looking for a guarantee I'll make it back to Meridian safely. And what makes you think you'll find it with us? <laughs> He's a scavy. Knows how to find treasure amongst the trash. Scott says he's interested in Manor Lords as well. Some good indie stuff on the horizon. Dude, I know. And the, here's the thing that blew me, blew me away. I didn't know this. I started playing it today. I'd heard really, really good things about it. I started playing a little bit today. And then I saw on a tweet somewhere, I think it might have been, or it might have been an a, ACG's review. I think that's it, ACG instead of AGC. Anyway, they said it's a one-man show. I cannot believe this game was made by one person. I can't. <laughs> I'm freaking out about that part because it's amazing. <laughs> Surveyor, mate. He glances at Mick and Barris. On hard times is all. I haven't made a career of scabbing. Promise. Sure you haven't? What else you got? Uh, say nothing. Reuben glances at you nervously and licks his lips. I can give you guild intros. Access to the Grey Traders. Pathways to new settlements, you name it. Mick stares at him until Reuben begins to sweat. Then he shrugs. All right, I buy it. But if you screw us over, I'll report you for fraud. You'll definitely have an in with the guild then. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Decide what to do with him. I got a little quest update in the left there. That's nice. Mick gives him a look of baffled disgust. We searched inside the plane. Nothing there. Two dead pilots, Ellis said. Some ransacked boxes and containers. The things have been thoroughly picked over. A shame, but to be expected. Mm. We found fresh tire tracks near the plane. Oh, that's an interesting way to spell it. Not surprising that we aren't the only ones to have come for a squiz. Could you tell anything about who was here? A quick look at something. They call it a squiz. That's interesting. Looks like at least two vehicles. We're thinking the first set was made by the mongrels and the other's most likely Meridian. Mer Merid it's probably Meridian. It's not Meridian. I, I, I'm going to say Meridian mistakenly forever because I spent two summers down there in southern Idaho and Meridian doing internships for Spectech Micron when I was in college. So, Yeah, Meridian. And wherever they came from, they headed back there quickly. Meridian, eh? Guess... Yes, cat. My cat is the tiniest cat. Everybody who sees her says that. She's there like, oh my God, she's so tiny. And yet you sound like an elephant when you jump off the window. How do you do that? Good Lord, cat. 
mad at any. Guess that lot have got to do something to justify the amount of guns and ammo they extort from the rest of us. Don't think they'll be too pleased we know that we're here, though. He gives you a wolfish grin. Hmm. Reuben said the Ardath crew took something very heavy from the plane. Interesting. Any chance he's bullshitting? Doubt it, Ella says. Guy looks scared out of his wits. Happy to just be alive and that we didn't shoot him. DJ says, yeah, I reckon he was in shock. Poor fellow's telling the truth. That's all I found so far. All right, let's see. Then. We know Matt in from here, but that's all. Doesn't give us a lot to go on in any negotiations. He gives you a stern look. Have you really had a check around? We can't spend all day here, but I expect you to find more than this. <laughs> well, I was pretty thorough. Well, I'll have another look on around your bike, for you. then. I'll see if there's anything else out here on the map that we haven't looked at for you there, Buster. There is a big portion of the map over there. I think we've seen everything, though. Anyway. Yeah, Manor Lords is impressively advanced for a one-person job. I'm... I mean, the last time I played a City Builder game was Frostpunk, which I really like. And Frostpunk 2 is coming out later this year. Frostpunk was really stressful, though. And so far, Manor Lords has not been that stressful, and I like that. The default mode seems to be more enjoyable. Frostpunk is just... I mean, I really liked it, but my god, it stressed me out. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And that's generally the way city builders feel for me. They, I guess they're made to stress you out. I guess there's a group of people that like that sort of game. They like being stressed out. I don't... Not me. I'm playing to have fun. Not create more stress. I get enough of that work. But Manor Lords reminded me a little bit of... Crusader Kings 3, which is really, really good. Mark says, I've been watching a Manor Lords playthrough and it looks like a fun game. It, So far, it is. I played almost four hours this morning. I only meant to play like an hour when I got up. Next thing I know, four hours it went by and I was like, oh, good lord. <laughs> okay. I need to go do some other things. All right. There's two bodies outside the fuselage recently killed. Did they look like they were in that thing when it came down? Didn't look like they were from around here, at least. Strange looking clothes and their hands were too clean. One of them had a key in his boot. She looks at Mad, who nods ever so slightly. Haven't found the lock it fits, though. That's all I found. All right, let's see. Yeah, he's going to give you the same line. So I was pretty thorough. I don't think there's anything left to find. If you say so. All right, everyone ready? We got... Party gained level. Somebody's cracking a soda. I'm going to drink some of mine here. It's almost empty. Mark says, I'm guessing you don't want spoilers. No, I don't. Never. <laughs> no spoilers, please. Our truck's ready to go. He turns to face room and come up front with me. I got a lot of questions for you. Let's right move you out. are, mate. Travel to Meriden. Broken road. Yeah, so there's a big roadmap for this game. They're talking about a patch coming out on the 19th of April and another one in May. Lots of changes that they're going to be making trying to improve this game. So this, even though this game isn't in early access, I don't think. I don't think this was an early access release. Let's see, what's it say? Yeah, the reviews on it on Steam are mixed, and it's not an early access game. But I think that's going to be the smartest way to treat it, is as an early access game. And I would expect it to be... With the aggressiveness they're already showing with the roadmap, I would expect this to be a game that's going to be improved significantly over the next year. It's kind of the same thing that's what's going on with the Tracy Brothers uh, Cyber Knights Flashpoint. I played it when it first came out, and I, and I liked the look and feel of it, but it seemed like there was like it wasn't fully baked, and it's an early access game. And they have been making changes after changes after changes to it, which is fantastic. They've been improving the game right and left, but 
I I want to play something that's kind of more complete. <laughs> so so I, that's why you haven't seen Cyber Knights on the channel yet. It's not that I don't love the game. You guys know from Star Traders Frontiers that I love the Tracy Brothers. Those guys are awesome developers. I'm waiting until Cyber Knight Flashpoint gets to uh, a more stable state so I can actually learn it and then maybe throw up a couple tutorials too because I ended up making tutorials for Star Traders and people are still watching those and learning things, which is really fun. Jess says, uh, she's been at the gates for a few minutes now. It's impossible to hear what they're saying from this distance, but finally her calm composure cracks and she yells at her impassive opponent. I am not leaving my people out here to bake in the sun. DJ says something, gestures at the gates, then heads inside the town with a short, guilty glance at the convoy. Stranger. The woman Jess is arguing with wears a white jacket with nary a stain or a crease. The shields are golden eyes from the sun and pitches her voice to carry to you and anyone else who may have heard Jess's outburst. As I said, Meriden has had an influx of people seeking aid. You of all people know how much it costs to house a population, let alone feed them. She spots you and Mick approaching and raises a hand to forestall Jess's response. Miss Brown... Your friends appear to have missed the line over there for the other siders. I suggest you all get back in that line before I ask my guards to put you there. Scott says, agreed. I get a little frustrated with the early stuff. Don't mind bugs, but I like to dive into a complete game. See, and that's where I'm at. Like, th things start changing and features get added and there's a bunch of improvements and all that stuff. And I don't feel like I can get a handle on the game. And maybe that has something to do with my age. And and other things, but you know the way my brain works and stuff like that. I really just want to dive into a game, know that I'm going to be able to learn all the different pieces of how it works, and then just play it. And then when I get done playing it the first time, I'm like, okay, which parts were hard or might need more explanation, and is it worth it to me to build a tutorial so that other people can learn from it? Because I felt that way with Stellaris. I, it took a long time to learn that game, and I saw a lot of people struggling with things like trade routes. And I made my trade route video, and I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I didn't even know you could do trade in this game. I didn't know how it worked. You know, and it's like, yeah, that's why I made a video for it, because it's not intuitive. <laughs> and I'm sure there's going to be some stuff that I'll be able to do with Cyber Knight's Flashpoint, but I want to wait till it's more of a complete game. All right, so, well... We're not other siders, we're your neighbors. <laughs> uh, everyone from outside Meriden is an other sider. It's the only way we can ensure we're treating everyone fairly. Governor Smith, this is all that's left of Bookton. Our town was raided and its inhabitants scattered three nights ago. Jess tells me you're harsh and fair. As mayor of Bookton, I officially request your aid in retaking and rebuilding our community, starting today. The man at the head of the queue pipes up. Who cares? Westonia is under threat from forces with ten times as much firepower as us, and I've sat in this line for two days on the off chance Governor Smith would deign to speak to me. Wait your turn like everyone else. Mm. Angela regards him coolly. Deign to speak to you, is it? Far be it for me to rupture such self-serving delusions by actually having a conversation with you. <laughs> Governor, Mick recaptures her attention. We haven't come empty-handed. We've got specialists in our convoy. Farmers, medics, a mechanic. You know Mad and Ella, scouts from Bally Bally Hall. An old mate here. He gives you a critical look. What the fuck do you do again? <laughs> the guild will be expecting me. I was sent to survey Alderside and got caught up in Brookton's bad luck. A map maker? I'll admit I'm curious as to what you found on your travels. Off the official record, of course. You hear Mick mutter, just make sure to keep your nose clean. Angela briefly scans the rest of your convoy, her expression unreadable. I must say, Mick... You do have quite the group here. I can see why Jess was so adamant I let you in. She taps a finger on her chin. I'd love to help you, but there are plenty of others in this line with similar skills. What it comes down to is whether or not you can support yourselves without relying on handouts. 
If you could guarantee that you won't be a burden on our already strained economy, we could let you in. On a provisional basis, of course. Mick turns and shouts to the rest of the convoy. If anyone's got trade goods, now's the time to show them. Hmm. All right. Well. We found a crash plane on the way here. And we mail married and checked it out too. Can you tell us what you brought back that was so heavy it took two men to lift it? She lets out a high-pitched whistle and her guards stand to attention. I've heard enough. I'd be more than happy to continue this conversation inside. Ooh. Ella left the party. Mad left the party. Entered Meridian. Meridian. Mick, his voice is grateful, almost servile, but a savage sense of victory underlies the expression. Thank you so much, Governor Smith. I'm keen to begin our partnership. Gestures for the combo to follow. Come on, you lot. Head held high. He leads the way inside Meridian's walls. Well, there we go. We're in there, then. So. I'm getting hungry. It's getting close to 5.30. I'm going to try to see what else happens here. And then I'm going to go get something to eat. And then later on tonight, there will be Manor Lords. Mick walks over to you. After everything that's happened, this is the most relaxed you've seen. Mate, right. I'm glad that's all sorted. I think my hair would have fallen out if we got turned away. You lit a fire under him, bringing up the plane crash. I'm hoping we can use that to our advantage. He sighs and looks around. Here's the deal. I'm going to try to talk to Governor Smith into helping us retake Brookton. You're welcome to get the lay of the land first. But if you could meet me at Smith House sooner rather than later, I'd appreciate the backup. Sounds like a plan. I'll see if I can catch the governor before she gets bogged down in affairs of state. She's got a lot going on right now, but Brookton is a priority. It has to be. He says this last part almost to himself, though the conviction in his voice doesn't make it through the worry on his face. Make sure you stock up before you head back out into the wild blue yonder, eh? Who's this guy moonwalking over here? Wash up now, DJ, or your friends will know that you doubted him. This old man speaks with a twinkle in his eye, leaning on his cane to appraise you from a comfortable distance. You made it. DJ stares at you. I was sure Angela was going to keep you in that line out of spite. <laughs> oh, she tried. Uncle Koya gives a deep throat a chuckle. Tenacious is Angela Smith's bloody middle name. He touches the brim of his hat. I'll see you in Kurda then. Angela's obviously not going to give me the time of day. Stop by any time, even if you don't manage to find it. Yes, Conk. The old man gives one last look, then shuffles away. Bye-bye, Uncle. He watches Uncle for a few moments, a tender smile on his face. Conk asked me to find a treasure he lost in Meriden. He says it's not worth anything to anyone but him, even if it looks a bit swanky, upmarket, expensive. We know that from English. That's not unique to Australia. He holds up his hand. One half of the treasure is a black rectangle about the size of my palm, and the other is a white plastic rope that slots into the end. Let's see if we can hunt it down. Oh, so we have to go hunt something down here. What's this place look like? Oh, it's big. Brookton Conway. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, anyway. The music in the game is cool. Oh, I can Let's see, Master Ballot Music Live. I'm gonna be able to hear the characters' voices when they talk. I love, I love the art style in the game. That was, that was the reason I started following their posts on Twitter so long ago. Is because I saw the art style and was like, oh yeah. And then of course it's post-apocalyptic, which is always gonna track me. Wow, motorcycles, hunters and collectors. That's interesting. Let's get the let's get the lay of the land here before I get too hungry. It's happening. My stomach is making noises. The mean kind. Yeah, like I mean they obviously had some really talented artists working on this. This is cool. I dig it. Chickens. This old bloke. Oh, wow, there's going to be a lot of place, a lot to explore here out there. Wow. Okay. Yeah, tons. 
people hanging around the fire pit. There's garbage cans out here. Solar panels. Oh, there's a bar. Oh, perfect. That's just where I want to be right now. In fact, I wish I would have stopped and... and I was going to stop at the liquor store today on the way home. And I didn't. And now I wish I had. Because we need a whiskey Manor Lord stream for later tonight. That's what we really need. There's quite the little city over here, isn't there? Holy cow. Is that as far as it can go? The Flaming Gala. Interesting. Okay. Well, there's a big city to, here to explore, so... Heck is this place over here? <laughs> Mark says he has gin, but he's ran out of tonic. Oh man. Yeah. My wife, when she was a drinker, she liked she liked gin. That's the Is gin the one that tastes like pine needles? That's the is that's the one I can't drink. My wife would always laugh at me. She liked martinis, too. And the first time I tried to drink one of those, I, I was like, you know what? I think you could clean anything with this better than using some kind of industrial solvent. That was... And she gives me crap of, for whiskey. <laughs> Mark says yes. So that's the pine and stuff. Gin. <laughs> I can't drink that. Brave on you for drinking that. <laughs> And Scott says, gin and tonic, my go-to. <laughs> my go-to wedding drink if I'm not driving. Yeah, I'm... I'm whiskey. The funny thing is, my wife drinks those martinis, and they do, t they do taste like cleaner fluid to me. And then she gives me shit for whiskey as, it, as that being cleaner fluid. And I'm like, no, whiskey has flavor. What are you talking about? A martini is just... Industrial solvent. <laughs> oh man, alcohol is a funny thing. So what's over here? There's people standing here. There's what? You got some preacher guy up here. In the world preacher dude. Ranger. This godly dressed gentleman clearly likes to be the center of attention, but he has a kind face and piercing eyes. His voice is like liquid gold. Deep, mellow, and rich. That's how I describe whiskey. Liquid gold. <laughs> Mark says there are different types of gin, though. Some are more pine needly than others. Oh man. <laughs> oh, that, and that's like so. Yeah, there are two. There are two alcohols that I identify with things that aren't alcohol. Gin is pine needles, and of course we all know that you know smoky peat and stuff is a campfire. <laughs> it's like, oh man. So yeah, scotch is a campfire. The first time I tasted it, I was like, oh my god, it's like drinking a campfire. Except it actually tastes kind of good, too. But it is like drinking a campfire. Like, that's that's just... Alcohol is weird that way. And then there's grappa. Oh my god, I got introduced to that when I was in Germany. That was fascinating. That was like... If, if there was... An alcohol that was the essence of hot sauce. That's what grappa is. It's fascinating stuff. In other words, I'd like to tell a good story, put on a good show. I'd like to say I'm as entertaining as hell. But a rotten egg or tool will convince any sane man that his work is not everyone's cup of tea. He brushes some imagery, lint, imaginary lint off his sleeve and finally takes a breath. But I have a trick or two that might be of interest. Step right up. As they used to say. Can I step left up? Okay. I'll step up. What's gonna what's gonna happen to me up here? We know what happened in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> that didn't go well. <laughs> Try Calavados. Out the way to lose the back of your throat faster than anything. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I like to enjoy my liquor. <laughs> That's the whole point. Oh my god. Uh, Jepson's Mallard. Chicago's finest. You guys are great. That's awesome. I got the best viewers. 
Adam turns to the rest of the small crowd. A round of applause for our brave volunteer. I will now make him drink pine needles. Oh, show me a drink. I was going to wait until the crowd was a little bigger, but all right, just for you. He dips his right hand into his coat pocket and emerges holding a large golden coin. Watch carefully, mate. Prepare to be amazed. The coin dances across the knuckles of his right hand while he pulls out a handkerchief with his left. He wipes his brow theatrically as he opens his right hand and drops the coin into his palm. Closes his fist around the coin and tucks the fabric into the top of his hand. He pulls the handkerchief through his fist, shakes it loose, and opens his palm. There's no coin. Where did it go, eh? Hang on a tick. He reaches up behind your ear with his left and pulls the coin free. Ta-da. <laughs> Ah, uh, you've almost got enough to buy yourself some dignity there. You're a real charmer, ain't you? <laughs> uh, how and why did a stage musician come to Meredith? It's the capital of West House, of course. The beating economic heart, eh? There are some sizey stops east of here, sure. Southern Cross and Hangluri and all that, but the western bit, you can't beat Meredith. Mark says, that's why I stick to beer or red wine, unless the brandy is fine in the port. <laughs> it's, oh, that's funny. I used to drink a lot of red wine. That was actually kind of like my gateway into the whole thing. Well, no, it wasn't. Vodka was. But then I turned over to red wine. I really got to where my favorite thing in the world was a good Malbec. But then it started giving me a headache. And so I've pretty much been off the red wine and I moved over to whiskey. And that's been my alcohol of choice for the last several years now. And if you're like me and you play the guitar and you cut your teeth learning all, all of Metallica's catalog, the blackened whiskey is wonderful. I'm so surprised. It's amazing. I really like it. And that's what I was going to stop and get today, but I didn't. How much does a traveling musician... He says, I go where the money is. I stick around, provide some entertainment, keep the people amazed and confounded, and head out before they accuse me of witchcraft, which happens more often than I'd like, if I'm being honest. Hmm. Let's see. Well, bye, buddy. I'm gonna go. I'm half tempted to watch another movie tonight because I, I watched a movie last night for the first time in a long time. I sat down and I, I finally had a chance to watch Oppenheimer. And that was incredibly good. No wonder it won Oscars. No wonder Robert Downey Jr. won an Oscar. That film was something else. I never, I don't get a lot of chances to watch movies because the living room and the TV. The, 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 we, don't, we don't watch our TV very much. And it's usually because about the time I'd like to sit down and watch a movie, my wife has fallen asleep on the couch. But she's on vacation this week, and she doesn't come back till tomorrow night. So I may have to, I may have to watch another movie. This is a ton of stuff I haven't seen. Hunters and collectors. What's this place? Hunter, you step into what feels like a temporary lull in battle. You know, a line hand-drawn separating one half of the room from the other. Welcome to Hunters and Collectors, me. I'm Hunter, and that bloke with the fine mustache is called. What can I do for you? Hmm. What can we do for you? He eyes Hunter while addressing you. We've both got plenty of work for you. All you gotta do is promise you'll at least take a gander at the job board when you blow in with the dust. I see. Hmm. What's in it for me? Money for getting shit done, good cardio for all the running around you'll be doing, and a sweet reputation here in Meredith. Uh, I don't mind any of that, except that cardio part. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, the happiest part, the single most happiest thing in the world was when I got out of the military. That was, that was my greatest relief, was knowing that I would never ever in my life be forced to run a mile and a half or three miles ever again. I'm the world's worst runner. I hate it more than I hate anything else. And knowing I would never have to do that again made me so happy. When my time was finally up and it was like, oh my God, I never have to run again. Are you kidding me? I'll be in heaven for the rest of my life. 
You got it, he says. Fantastic. He leans toward you, just between you and me. My job, sir. Official Surveyor's Guild business. Far more engaging than the mindless poaching gigs my friend here offers. But you want mindless? Go clean one of your bloody CDs. They scowl at each other. They break eye contact and focus back on you. Anyway, I have something you can get stuck into. Quick smart. He gestures to a row of hunting rifles behind him. I run out these bad boys to help newcomers save up for their own, but some dags who call themselves the Mason Gang are avoiding me because their loan is up. I want you to head over to the Flaming Gala and bring back my guns and the casings from any bullets they've wasted. Dag, an uncool or unpopular person, literally poo stuck to a sheep's bum. See also Dero. <laughs> oh, I'll be using that. That's funny. <laughs> Poo stuck to a sheep's bum. That's hilarious. You'll need to talk to Ian Mason and the Murky Leads. They're called Sultana, Ridgy Didge, and Aki. I see. Okay. Well, that sounds fun. Well, guys, I'm going to go eat. It's been an hour. I'm going to go eat, and then I'm going to practice. Uh, I'm going to run through the songs for School of Rock, and then I'm going to hop on and do some Manners, Lord, so it'll, it'll be at least an hour and a half, probably. <laughs> Tag. A bit shorter than the English Dingleberry. Yep, Mark, that's exactly what I was thinking. Quite a bit shorter. Quite a bit more succinct. Very funny. Yeah, so if you're hanging out late tonight, if you're if you're on the West Coast like me, it won't be that late. Um, but for the rest of you, probably in an hour and a half, two hours, I'm going to get back on because I'm going to I'm going to whittle my night away. I think playing Manor Lords, unless something strikes me as as must see TV tonight, and I decide to watch a movie. But that's my plan. So Manor Lords has been great. I will see you all later next time all that jazz same kind of thing probably tomorrow too i'll probably be streaming maybe a little bit of this maybe a little bit of manor lords but just keep an eye out could be some streams tomorrow too tomorrow's gonna be my last chance to do that kind of stuff for a while so i will see you all thank you very much <laughs> mark i suspect the gin will have kicked in See y'all later. Happy gaming, everyone.